Hey, everybody, how are you? This is Dr. E.T., your favorite doctora from the 956 and the RGV. And I'm super excited to share my newest um, guide for teachers and students. It's right here. You already have it um, titled Effective Classroom Strategies to Enhance Speaking and Writing. Okay, before we start, this by the way, this is going to be a very short, informal little video just to give you a heads up on what this guide offers you. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, if you want to text me, if you have a question, hey, Dr. E.T., I'm trying this, but can I do XYZ? Whatever it is, text me, email me, message me. Here is my contact info. If you actually subscribe to my webpage, then you'll be one of the first people to receive information when I have freebies or when I have sessions or when I have uh, prizes or things like that. So here is my contact info. I hope I get to hear from you soon. Now here is uh, the workbook. I will share with you that um, in my household, I do have uh, some of my children who took the telpas and passed the telpas. And so I know and I understand the struggle. And of course, as a bilingual ESL teacher, I totally understand the struggle. So I came up with something that's very, very basic, very easy to use. Um, I'm going to start off with one of the pages there in your workbook in your guide, first of all, make sure that you share um, the power of cognates with students, okay? Words that sound the same, have a similar meaning, um, that look the same. Yes, we do have false cognates, but we also, uh, those are party poopers, so I don't like to talk a lot about them. But just, you know, you're gonna see in here that I just have just a couple of, um, you know, ideas that you could use with your students, just for sure. Sharing the power of cognates, of course, if it's a Latin based language, then of course, um, you would just bring that up. That way students activate their prior knowledge and they're able to figure out some words um, when they don't understand what they are in English. Then I also have another section where it says give, give me five and these are just ways to have your students answer. Um, as a teacher, I've never wanted to put a child on the spot that did not know the answer. So I always gave them options. You know, do you want a lifeline? Do you want hint, hint? Do you need a minute? And so that um, you can find on page nine. But what we're really here for is we're really here for the speaking portion of the telpas. And so what you're going to see is um, if I come up here, you're going to see a quadrant. Okay. And, and for this quadrant, what I've done is I've break, broken it up into four sections. So give me a second while I get that paper. Okay, well, here is the paper. So what I do is I ask my students to grab a piece of paper, a white paper. If you want, if they're younger children, you could even have paper that have lines on them. And so you ask them to fold it into four squares. Depending on the age level, this will be really simple. If it's little second graders, it might take them a while. And there you go. Now we have a square, okay? On this square, this quadrant, we're going to write up here math, science, social studies, and factor opinion. This, this last section really could be anything you want, okay? Um, and on each section, we're going to have a T-chart. And so as you can see here in, in, the, in the video, in the, in the cover of the book, you have photo one, photo two, photo one, photo two. And let me, let me explain what that means, okay? So once kids have that, it's going to look something like this, okay? Of course, in the little handwriting, notice here I have math, and then I have my T-chart, science, and I have my T-chart. So what happens with it now? Let me go up here. Notice here I have photo one and photo two. And in the workbook, you're going to see maybe I have a couple of pictures. You know, um, you could use any pictures you want. Actually, you can find a picture online. I like to find pictures and videos on airpano.com, for example, because this is what happens. If I tell you to look at this picture right now and I ask you as a grown up, tell me, what do you see in these two pictures? What are some differences and what are some similarities? And for the most part, if I could care less about these pictures, I, I'm not gonna know what to say. I'm probably gonna say, well, one is big and one is small. And you know, what happens with telpas is, first of all, you need to understand that the children are being graded. They're being scored by artificial intelligence. Yes, by a computer. And when you let them know this, 
they have a heart attack. It's, it's amazing to see when they gasp. <gasps> what? A computer? Yes, a computer is beating you. So let's, let's beat this computer. And so what happens is with my strategy, what, what, what occurs is that it gives the, the child options on what to talk about, what to write about, first of all. So now if, if I'm looking here at picture one and picture two based on the math right here, then I can I ask myself, what do I see in picture one? And I can give it whatever name I want. Maybe I think it's a bobcat. Maybe I think it's a tiger. Maybe, uh, you know, I think it's um, a cheetah. Whatever it is, that's going to be valid because that's what I see. So let's say that I think it's a bobcat then I'm going to write Bobcat at the very top of my T-chart. Picture two is going to be the rabbit. There we go. So now this is what I tell my kids, and usually that's why when I go to sessions face-to-face, -face, I give students these glasses, right, because I tell them I want you to look at these pictures through the lens of only math because I'm only working on math. What do you see in picture one? That is only math. And depending on the grade level, they're going to give you different responses, right? So um, what does math have to do with numbers, right? Fractions, um, decimals. So you're going to hear responses like the number of dots. Okay, write it down. The number of dots. What else do you see in picture one that's math? How much it weighs. Boom, how much it weighs. Write it down. And they don't have to be complete sentences, right? And the same thing for picture two. What do you see in picture two that's math? And then you'll hear them say, well, it has two ears. Write it down. The ears are maybe 10 inches long. Write it down. Whatever it is, it hops two inches. Write it down. And this is the thing because it's artificial intelligence. They're going to, whatever they write is going to be the right answer. So me as a teacher, I'm not going to discourage my child and say, no, what do you mean the rabbit jumps 20 inches? No, he only jumps six. No, you let them write down what they see and what they believe. So what will happen is that in your little quadrant here, the kids are going to have a bunch of notes, right? On the rabbit and on the actual um, bobcat. So what happens is from here, we're going to go to the next section where we're going to actually start writing our sentences, right? And so here, what I ask my students to do is that we're going to recycle this is what we're going to do. We're going to recycle the question. And the question is, describe at least two ways these pictures are similar. So guess what? The students are going to write that down. You're going to get your quadrant. You're going to flip it over. And you're going to write on there. Describe at least two ways these pictures are similar. And then guess what? They already have what I call a sentence stem that has already been taken from the test. We're recycling that. Okay, and you're going to see that on page 22. And then they're going to write. These two animals are similar because, you know, and once we get to the science, right, you'll hear them say they're both animals, they're both living organisms. So that could be one of the responses. These two animals are similar because they are both living creatures. They both have a heart, you know. They both can run and jump. And you see, and so they're going to grab information from all of these quadrants. So this is the thing. If your student does not know how to write, that's fine. You tell them, write, draw a picture as long as you're able to explain what you drew. Okay? If they have problems spelling words because they'll tell me, Miss, I don't know how to spell the word. It doesn't matter. Sound it out. Spell it out. And when you're done writing your sentences, I mean, give me at least six to eight sentences on the back. Okay, then you're going to start with question two. What are the two differences between these two animals? You're going to copy exactly what it says on the test. You're going to recycle, and then you're going to make your own sentences based on what you have. Now, you have, might have students that love science, and their science square is going to be full. Maybe their math is not going to be as full. That's fine. But we want them to use academic language. We want their language to flow. So this is what I tell the students. Once you have all your notes on your quadrant, once you've already started writing your sentence, you're going to practice before you record. And you're going to start reading. And what if you get stuck in the sentence? If you get stuck in the sentence, boys and girls, stop and start from the beginning. If you cannot read your writing, 
you know, because you're like, oh my gosh, well, well, I can't understand what I wrote. Skip the word. Because in order for our children to score the highest possible, they need to speak as native speakers, which means their language has to flow. There can be no pausing. There can be no, uh, mm, mm, you know. And so this is what we do. So my little daughter, Alina, you know, we trained her to do this for not even 15, 20 minutes, and she did it, and she passed advanced high. If our children are failing and they do speak English, the reason they're failing is because they're not recording enough time of, of themselves speaking. So here, that's, this is all the guide is about. Very easy, very basic. You can make copies of it. Um, and really, it's to get students to write before they speak. Now, this is just short and sweet because I do not want to bore you. I just uh, wanted to share exactly the thought and the philosophy and the mentality be behind this guide. And I'm telling you, it works. So when you follow these strategies with your kids, call me, text me, let me know. And let me know their scores. And then, of course, if you have any questions, if you want to reach out to me, if you want a little bit more support, you can definitely text me, email me, and I'll be there for you. So here we go. This is it. Thank you, guys. And um, I'll see you soon.